Hey everybody, guess who's back? Yep, it's Carl Shu from Snorkel.tv. And today I'm totally excited to be talking to you about Green Sock's new Blit Mask tool. And I'm going to be showing you this little demo here where we see it in action, where I have 32 boxes with scrolling numbers in them. And you'll see that it runs insanely smooth. I have 32 Blit Masks here running at the same time, all of them running at different speeds and we're also alternating the directions. So when the Blit Mask tool first came out, and especially when the wrap feature was announced, I really wanted to push it to see how far it could go. And I couldn't be happier with the performance that I'm getting here. Now I originally intended to do a full overview tutorial on Blit Mask, uh, but just recently somebody in the Green Sock forums asked how to build a slot machine animation and I was like, you know what, let me just focus on that one little aspect of it and uh, see where it goes. So what we're going to be doing is um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you files for doing just a little three-digit spin here. And you'll see that each digit comes in one after the next, and it's totally randomized. And it's really cool how smoothly this animation can run. But we're going to be focusing on just creating one single digit. I'll give you all those files for you to play around with, but we're going to start with one strip of numbers and I'm going to show you how you can spin them and wrap them. Before we get into the flash, let's just take a little bit of time to talk about what a blit mask actually is. Alright, if you go to greensock.com slash blit mask, you'll have a great explanation here and an interactive demo and an overview of all the features. Um, blit mask's most important feature is that it can allow you to scroll objects up to 1000% faster. Yes, you did read that correctly. And what a blit mask does is that it takes a snapshot of any display object that you have. So let's just say you have a giant movie clip on the stage or an image. Uh, what a blit mask will do is capture all the pixel data of that object, store it in memory, and it will only render the pixels that you need in any given time. So if you have a massive image, your blit mask allows you to define a small rectangular area that will act as a mask and only render in that area the pixels that you need. This technique is referred to as blitting, and I'll give you some resources for more information on that. Uh, but this interactive example here shows you the comparison demo between a blit mask and a regular mask. So if we just go to a regular mask real quick and do a tween, you'll notice here that my frame rate, excuse me, is averaging out at around 37, maybe high 40s average frames per second and it's a very jerky animation and it's very difficult to read this text. So we'll let this tween run till completion and you'll see here again average frame rate of 41 frames per second and it's very difficult to read this text as it's sort of uh, herky-jerky. If I go over to a blit mask though and I enable bitmap mode and smoothing this will give me the best look I will say tween and we will watch it tween and now it's going super smoothly and you will see here that we are just pegging it at 60 frames per second consistently all right so again the advantage of a blip mask is that it only renders the pixels that you need all right that's the only thing the display list is occupied with the pixels inside of this rectangle and it's constantly sampling those pixels out of the larger bitmap snapshot that was taken now there are a lot of uh, different ways to modify your blip masks to increase performance or the way they look visually. Uh, we'll talk about some of those things, but I really suggest that you read this page and also spend some time in the documentation. But I'm going to show you how to get up and running with the blip mask and focus on the wrap feature. Alright folks, let's jump into Flash. And I want to start off with a little bit of a comparison of how you would do a scrolling uh, number ticker the old school way. So let's say you had the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 that you wanted to have seamlessly scroll across the screen. Well, you would probably end up duplicating that sequence of elements, like you see here, and you would build a basic classic tween where the first element would go across, and then the second batch would come in. And once you got to the end, you'd probably have a little bit of an overhang so that when you looped back, the next frame would be spot on. And that animation would look something like this. And now, don't pay attention to the stuff going off screen here. I just want to show you that we do have a fairly seamless loop. 
and you can see the offset actually happening. Now, if I were to turn on masking for this layer, and now we'll test, and you'll see what appears to be a fairly seamless loop. Now, Flash Player is chugging along a little bit with this. We're going to get much better performance with our blip masks. So that's the old school way. What I'm going to do is start out with a strip that looks like this, a little bit different. It's a vertical strip, and you'll see that we have the numbers 0 through all the way down to 9, okay? What I want to do is have these numbers scroll vertically. So I don't want all of these numbers to be revealed out of the gates. I'm going to create a blit mask, which will only reveal a certain area of these numbers. So let's go into my code on frame 1 here. And I have some event listeners set up for my spin button, and I have some code commented out, which I'll be activating in a little bit. Um, I have a random number function here as well. But in order to enable the blit mask on that strip of numbers, all I need to do is import my normal greensock classes. If I do import com.greensock.wildcard, blit mask will come in just fine. And what I'm going to do is create a new blit mask. I'm going to say, uh, var bm is going to be a blit mask and we'll create a new blit mask. Now when you create a blit mask there are a number of parameters that you are going to be setting in the constructor. So here the first thing that we're going to set is going to be the target. All right, And let me just really quickly move this, I'm sorry, down here because I have my little reminder comments in here. So when we create a new blip mask, the first thing it wants is the target. And that strip of numbers is called strip 1. The next thing we want is the X position of the blip mask. So what I'm going to do is use strip 1's X position, and then we want the Y position, which will be strip 1.Y. And for the width, I know that that clip is 80, but let's just do, uh, I'm sorry, strip 1.width. And for the height, Let's just say we want to show the first four numbers. Uh, let's say it's going to be 400. And the next thing we want, I know it's going off screen, my uh, code completion here, is the smoothing. Okay, so if we want bitmap smoothing enabled, I'm going to say true. This can put a small hit on performance, but visually it's going to look awesome. Auto update means that whenever you, the uh, object moves, strip one, that means that the blip mask will automatically update itself. And so this next parameter is called auto update. I'll set that to true as well because it's easy. The next parameter is the fill color. So if there are any transparent pixels in my display object that I was capturing, they'd be filled in with this color. I'll just put zero there for now because my blip mask is going to be solid. And the last parameter is wrap. And I'm going to set that to false right now. We'll be turning that on in just a bit. So here, I've created my blit mask, and now let's test my movie out. And you'll see what happens here is that my SWIFT isn't big enough. So I'll scroll down, and there you go. So by doing the height of 400, you'll see that we see four digits. Each digit is 100 pixels tall. I'm just going to uh, knock that down to 300 so I don't have to be resizing that SWIFT. And we'll test, and there you go. So now I have just a basic mask effect going on, where the rest of the numbers below 2 aren't being shown. But let's say I want to move these numbers inside that mask, okay? I'm going to hook everything up when I hit my spin button. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's we'll create a tween. I'm going to say tween light. It could be tween light or max. It doesn't matter. Um, dot 2. And I'm going to change strip 1 over 1 second let's change the Y property to be negative 300, okay? And what this is going to do is move that strip up, obviously. So let's test my movie and hit spin. And now you'll see that it very smoothly moves up the proper amount of pixels, okay? Now, if I go down the other way, if I go to positive 300, let's save and test. Watch what happens. Oh, there it did. Everything from the top went down, but you'll see that I ran out of numbers. 
Now again, doing this the old school way, we would have had two strips that we were moving and we would either on the timeline or programmatically do some sort of offsetting. But with Blit Mask, what I can do is set Wrap to be True. And by doing that, check this out. This is awesome. I hit Spin and you'll see 9, 8, and 7 come into view. All right. The blip mask takes a screen ca a capture of all those pixels and it figures out, okay, if it's going beyond a certain point, it's going to sample pixels from the end and tack them to the beginning, and we're going to have a seamless wrap. It's absolutely phenomenal. This is going to blow your mind too. Let's go left to right. We're going to change that Y to X. And now you'll see when I hit spin, the whole thing moves over. So. I don't have three copies of this thing on the stage. I'm literally just moving one object over to the right and the wrap feature is making a perfectly tiled grid out of my bitmap. So let's do X of 300 and let's do a Y of 800 and check this out. So now you can see it creates a whole grid of elements. All right, I'm gonna slow that tween down to about five seconds and watch it again. There you go. It's as if I have many, many strips moving around. Wrap takes care of all that. It's absolutely phenomenal. So that's a basic wrap. Um, let's also go back and just demonstrate if I do a Y of, who knows, 1000 test. And now you'll see all those numbers come in from the top and we go to zero. Now, I know that the capture, the screen grab capture that I'm using with my video software sometimes make this look not as smooth. Um, also, I found that you get the best performance inside the browser window. So now, maybe it'll look a little bit better for you guys, but trust me, when you see this running in real life in your browser and not on a video, uh, you're gonna be blown away. Let's go back to Flash now, and I'm going to adjust the height of my blip mask to only be 100 pixels. And you'll see now that I only see one digit, and we're starting to get closer to the slot machine spin. I'm going to go right to zero there. All right, so that's really all you need to know. Um, what I'm going to do is show you a few different tricks, though. I'm going to enable this tween here, where I'm moving the Y value to negative 1,000. I'm doing a linear ease and I'm setting the repeat to minus one. So what that's gonna do is a constant loop. And we'll just test that out real quick. And we'll go to the browser, hit spin, and now just sit back and watch. And it's like an endless flow of numbers. The wrap feature takes care of everything. Tween Max moves everything around, and it's absolutely wonderful. So taking this to the next level, if you want to randomly spin to a number, Let's do that. I'm just gonna close this out, just get rid of some empty browser windows. And in Flash, you will see that. Let's just get rid of that guy here. I'm gonna give you a sample file that you can mess with. I have a little equation built here where we're going to take a random number between zero and nine, okay? Uh, each digit in my strip is 100 pixels tall, all right? So we're going to get a random number between zero and nine multiplied by 100. So we'll get a number between zero and 900. And then we're going to add 1200 to it. So what that's gonna do is just make sure that it loops around at least once before stopping. And then also what we're going to do is create a tween that just sets the Y value to be a string value of new number. So that's gonna be a relative position. So if I'm on six, and then I pick a new number that's between zero and nine, let's say it's three. Well, then we're gonna get 300 plus 1200. We're going to change our Y to 1500 pixels beyond where we currently are. And now let's give that a whirl. And when I hit spin, where it stops, nobody knows. We're gonna stop right at six. Hit spin again. It's gonna generate a random number. It's gonna add 1200 to it. And then we go to zero. And there you go. So now you have totally random action here. And you can take this even further, and I'll give you the files. We have scroll numbers. So here I have 
three objects on stage. I'm creating three blit masks for them. And here I just have a while loop that generates three random numbers and tells each strip to go to that random number with a slightly longer tween than the previous one. You can study this code a little bit. You'll have this file. I'll just test this out real quick again. And you'll see now that we have three of them spinning. And you can adjust the timing uh, and all that sort of fun stuff. But we get 9.55 and they always come to rest in perfect order. And as you saw when we started this up, we also have the ridiculous grid where I wanted to see exactly how crazy I could get. And there you go. Um, before I close, I just want to show you one more feature of Blitmask, and that is going to be the scroll X and scroll Y property. So I'm going to go back into my single digit start. And you see how quick I did all that? It's amazing. Um, let's get rid of all this. Just comment it out real quick. And now we have the scroll X and scroll Y property. Well, all the previous tweens I've shown you have been actually moving the strip around and the blit mask has been automatically updating itself. Well, I can also tween the blit mask directly and it has a scroll X and scroll Y property. And let's just say that we're gonna create a tween like this, tween light dot two. And now the target is going to be my blit mask, which I've called BM. I'm going to take, let's say, four seconds, and I'm going to tween the blit masks scroll Y property to one. And that just means that it's going to scroll as far as it possibly can without needing to wrap. So if I say scroll Y one, here we go. It's just going to scroll all the way to the end, and the last digit that I will see is nine. So scroll Y of one, will take us all the way to the end. Um, all right, folks, I'm going to wrap it up. I think you've seen plenty. And remember that when you download the files that I'm giving you here, um, you will get the uh, three number spinner where you can investigate the code. I'm going to give you the insane blit mask abuse file. And you can just watch for yourself how beautifully it runs. And you can mess with the parameters. And uh, yeah, that's what you'll get. So take it, have fun. And uh, I'm sure that Blit Mask will change the way you experience scrolling. Ta-ta.